on the back of the RSPT door, we have two terminal blocks, one for connecting power, the other one for connecting RS-485. The power is, uh, the top one is the live wire, the middle one, which is the blue on our side, is the neutral, and the bottom one is ground. Uh, the RS-485 section has, the top wire is red, which is the plus RS-485, the middle one is the ground or the minus RS-45. And the third one is the shield of the cable. Uh, the shield has to be connected only on one side, either on the RSPT or uh, on the controller, but not on both sides. Um, that's about it. The wire comes, they, they come from here, they connect here. Hi, I'm going to talk about the installation of the RSPT terminal usually comes with a pedestal, but you can also mount it on the wall with some brackets that attach here and here on the back side. Uh, after the mechanical installation, which is uh, mainly you have to punch out those holes and install it either onto the pedestal or onto the wall, you run up the uh, power cable through those grommets here into the inside of the RSPT. Uh, you may need, you need two cables, one of them would be the uh, power the other one would be the RS-485 from the controller. So the power, we have, we have two sections on the block terminal. The lower one uh, is about, uh, all about the power. The upper one is for uh, RS-485. Uh, we had the live uh, on the top here, the neutral on the middle, and of course the uh, green and yellow terminal is for the uh, ground. The top section has also three wires in it. The top one is the plus of the RS-45, the middle one is the minus of the RS-45, and the lower one is the shield of the cable. The shield, if you have one, needs to be connected only on one side. So either you connect it here and you leave it open on the controller side, or you connect it on the controller side and you leave it open here. Don't connect the shield on both sides. And next we will talk about the actual configuration of the unit. In order to configure the unit, we need to connect to it with a TCP IP cable or Ethernet cable. And we take a cable and connect it to LAN 1. There are two of them. We need to connect to LAN 1 over here. To connect to the unit, you need to power it on. When you do power it on, it's going to specify the IP address that's in there. So you know how to configure your laptop to be on the same subnet. Also, it will tell you what's the hex address for the RS-485. So in a couple of seconds, we'll see the address. As you can see, it's 192.168.2.212. The hex address was one. Right now it's configured to a controller, so it's gonna configure the terminal and we display the regular messages. Okay, so in order to configure the system, we need to connect to the uh, RSPT via the uh, LAN 1 port and uh, to communicate with it I need to set up my computer to the same network so I'll go to control panel network and my local area connection I'm going to set it up to be in the same network as the unit so as we saw before, the unit is 192.168.2.212. I'm setting up my computer to 192.168.2.100, and that will ensure that I'm communicating with the unit. So, clicking OK, I will close the configuration. Now I can open a browser, my Internet Explorer, and browse to the unit by typing the address of the unit, which is 192.168.2.212. And if, we, if the connection is set up properly, we have the uh, main screen of the RSPT. It will show us the, uh, uh, the initial configuration, the Ethernet address, the RS-485 address, the version of the RSPT right here. In order to change the configuration, I will click on Setup. And uh, there are two items that we need to change, basically, in the uh, RSPT. 
first of all, we need to make sure that the ORFAC channel, which is right here, is set up to RS-45 and not on Ethernet, which is the default value. So we'll change that here on RS-45. And the second one is the RS-45 address uh, of the unit itself. Uh, in case we have only one single unit in the, uh, uh, in the system, we'll set this unit to, uh, to be um, unit number one. The address will be one. In case we have more than one unit, then obviously uh, uh, the rest of the units will be uh, two, three, four, and so on. So here is where we set up our RS-45 address, and we can change that. Once we change all the configuration that's required, we'll click on Submit. And then we'll click here on the tab that says Save Setup. And we'll click on Apply. We'll be prompted to save the configuration. We'll click OK. And then the second prompt will be to reset the unit. Also click OK. We can hear that the unit restarts. And once that's complete, we can check the screen again on the unit itself to make sure that the changes that we applied uh, have, been, uh, have been saved in the unit. That's it. Ta -da! I have nothing more to say.